Hello viewers, how are you all? Today, I'm in the office and I'm editing a video back from August 2021 when we went over to Germany to see Marcus. Dave and I and Marcus are in Doisberg, West Bank of the Rhine and we're at a cemetery that dates back to the First World War. So there's First World War civilians in there and people from the armed forces and Second World War there's civilians from the area bombing of the Rhine industry area and then there's a big crypt that dates back to the Second World War and that's got SS people in it and people from the German armed forces. So I just thought I'd do a little piece to camera rather than trying to explain that in a voiceover. Here is the footage and uh, let's roll the video. We're at a mausoleum and graveyard today. And this was for the Third Reich. The senior SS people were, um, were cremated and buried here. These are civilians. 1944. Yeah, bombed dead by the bombings. Gerard Witt. You can see that date. It's about yeah. 44. Yeah. When the big 44. Started. Yeah, the. Yeah. Heavy yeah. area bombing from the Americans. Anna Klaassen. The lady also. 1944. The 8th of November was a really hard day for the yeah. Germans. They dropped hundreds of tons of explosives and there are a lot of them on the same day. You can see that most of them died on the 8th of November. There are women, men. Also some children. And it's sadly all just overgrowing now. It's been forgotten. Second of November. Yeah. They are all civilians, not military. No. No, it's the civilians that have suffered the most. There used to be a roadway here and it's all just growing away. 1944, 33 years old. It's no age, is it? 15th of October. They were all killed by a bombing raid, so thank you, RAF. <laughs> this, this is the harsh reality of war, right here. There are only a few of them who represent all of them. So that part on the middle here, that is a mass grave. Really? Yeah, it's a mass grave. So we were walking on on thousands of dead bodies or hundreds of that of dead bodies which are lying underneath us so that is a mass grave mm -hmm. that's why they have a big stone <coughs> and there over there is the the crypt for the senior people of the german army so these are all second world war so now i can show you the First World War, but it's, it's not really maintained. No. They don't take care of it and they don't give a shit on that small size. No, it's so sad. Yeah, that's why we are taught, taught at school, so always be ashamed about the grandfather. So that's the original installation. Please. Yeah goes again so no fash. second world war Billy Boucher. yeah all young people yeah some people are only 19 18 20 years old so and here's the first world war 1917 1917 They may be all from the same regiment and um, most of them were killed in Verdun. 1916. Mm. Now 
1918, in the last days of the war. Uh, 9th of December 1918. Yeah, that's really late on in the First World War. December 1918. That was full of spray paint, so they cleaned that up. You can see that. Yeah. Oh, I ain't got the battery on. <laughs> that looks terrible from the inside. Very sad. Mm -hmm. Lest we forget. These brass ones in the 1930s, the late 30s, and now it's uh, some kind of uh, uh, trash pit. So uh -huh. they, they dump the uh, the big chimneys of the industry. Poison so crook. So there was on top there was uh, barbed wire. Uh -huh. Well, and these are the typical 1930s uh, country fence yeah. type things. Yeah. They had some steel bits on top and then the barbed wire uh -huh. wrapped around. Yeah. So that bit of road is original and that is new, all new too. Yeah. So that's the old football field. And um, th back then it was possible to go there by foot. There was no water thingy, so it was not a peninsula, so it was accessible. And it was not owned by private hands, so. That was quite nice, but mm. it was unfortunately it was sealed at that moment. So we're going to. Two weeks later, there was a video on YouTube. <laughs> the guy was inside that. Yeah. Place. Ah. So that's the old time. Yeah. 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 That was these. Uh, we're saying uh, no photographs, no pictures allowed um, by uh, a deadly force of weapon. Uh, so we're going to go look at a peninsula where there's a German bunker. Was it a army bunker or? That is an army bunker that was uh, built directly beside uh, heavy, heavy anti-aircraft position. There's one of uh, one of four fixed anti-aircraft positions. So yeah. Where they uh, had a fixed installation of the guns. Interesting. So, so they were not 88s. They were 12.8, the biggest flag gun uh, of the Germans. Yeah. And they shot down a lot of bombers. So. Yeah. Uh, to get the B-17s, because they could fly a lot higher. Yeah. They had a pressurized uh, cabin. Manchester B-26 and yeah. all the others got down here. And some were, uh, some crashed in the River Rhine. Yeah, they still be in there. Yeah, they yeah. found some of these. Yeah, yeah okay. They found some of these wrecks in the river right on the river bank on the other side. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are only bits of pieces of aluminum and... So we're going to go look at a German army bunker from a World War II flak position. The flak position is missing now. Um, and we can't get right up to the bunker, it's sealed, but we're going to do it with a drone. That will be the last time you can drone that bunker. Yeah. But uh, it will be soon gone. Mm. You will see now why. So they dig out all that stuff here. Yeah. So that where the lady is going there, it's forbidden. And is it? We don't go there. No, we're drawing it from here. That's the target there, isn't it's it? On that bit. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. It's worth the day. Because um, going that bit is not fun. As I said, the police is coming here and they're patrolling. Yeah. And um, there's some kind of camera stuff. Yeah. In that area where the tree is. 
Yeah, so we go there to the, the bench. Oh, yeah, we can go to the bench. Yeah. Hello. Hello. It is I. What's rolling? And that's where the water bit is. There was the heavy AA gun position. In the center of the... No, not in the center. A bit to the to the bank side. Ah, yeah. And uh, there were four of them. In the star-shaped thing. There was a, a like a powerhouse, but that was a not a fixed installation. They had a truck with a big generator on top. Wow! To get the power for the searchlights and uh, yeah. for the electricity. And all this was to defend the steelworks. Yeah. Yeah. As I wow. said, the, the, behind us is yeah. the Netherlands. Yeah. And they all come from that way and going that way. Nice. <coughs> so we're now on the on the west bank, mm. and that is the east bank, and 90% of the industrial stuff is on that side. As you can see, it goes from there all the yes, way. Yes, massive. There, and then it goes, you cannot see that it's behind the tree line. It is, and there's and a big there, building there. It goes further there, after the power plant, yeah. it goes all the way down, where, you see where the yeah, church is. Uh, wow thing is and yes. the, the big house on that yes it goes even further than that so it's amazing it's quite large and it goes in that direction it goes about 12 or 15 kilometers in that direction in the length yeah so wow. you can imagine that is really 200 kilometers when you want to drive all around the yeah <laughs> it's, massive it's really massive That's why they called this one was back in the, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It was a really dirty city. <laughs> you could not right. put out the washing no. to dry it. It was rusty red after that. Really? Really. Oh dear. It was still along the drive. Full of dust and dirt. And but to be honest, Uh, that was really that was the heart of Hitler's weapon production. Yes, that city and Essen. Uh -huh. the city, Essen is directly nearby. Right. Essen, Oberhausen, Duisburg. Yeah. That was the heart of the rural gebiet, or rural area, and that where was where the magic happened. So right. In Essen, they built the the turrets for the tanks. In Oberhausen, they built the barrels mm -hmm. and the guns, and uh, in Duisburg, they made the hull of the tanks. Yeah. And uh, the gears and all the stuff, and then they assembled them in Duisburg, mm -hmm. and they go on the rail, and then they bring them, took them all the way to Russia and mm -hmm. France and everywhere. Always going by rail in Germany back then. Yeah. So the railway network is still very big, and um, even in the here in the Ruhrgebiet, it's full of railways. Right. So, where's the position from here? Where's the bunker from here? You see the end of that? There's, uh, there's some sandy bits and bobs and... Yes. Behind that, there's the ah. bunker. Ah! Yeah. Wow. You would see that. Mm. Yes. Have you found the bunker? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. check that on the display. Oh, yeah. I was standing on top of that and walking around. Yeah. There are some pictures of that on Facebook. Uh, not on Facebook, on Instagram. Some really old ones. I mm. was standing on top of that. Yeah, and you, you can't see it from here at all. Yeah, yeah it's flat. It's a flat one. Mm -hmm. But it's quite... Uh, much space inside that it's like two two tubes on each other mm -hmm. like a tube thing and uh, it's fully round inside and they had some uh, wooden things where you can stand on yep. so that they have a, a, a floor um, 
so that, that there's no water inside the bunker. Right. So we're walking on these uh, wooden things. Yes. So because of the River Rhine that was next to it. Yeah, be very susceptible you can see to it flooding. On the it's just yeah. 10 meters to the River Rhine, so. Yeah. But it looks very sandy soil, does that? Yeah, it's So it would it, be it, easy it's, to dig. Yeah, yeah, that's why they put these tube yeah. things. Yeah. They were already assembled. These are some like, like rings. Mm. And they put one ring after each other, and a round thing mm. could not sink down yeah. that easy. Yeah. Like a boat hull shape. Yes. So that's why they put these uh, these uh, wooden things inside that they could walk. Yeah. In a round thing, they could not walk. <laughs> you know? but, um, yeah. That's why the Germans always thought about what they do. That's it. Yeah. So, was not built in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Originally, these parts were, were used for drainage tunnels. Oh yes. And sewage tunnels. So, yeah. And they uh, repurposed they them. They reinforced that with steel bars, mm -hmm. and uh, then they used that as a bunker. And they right. Connected these things with some steel things and. And yep. then we'll put the concrete on top and then ready to go. And so you can put a bunker even on sandy grounds and on wet, wet land. Mm -hmm. So if this wasn't private land, could you still get in it, or is it is it bricked up? I don't know if it's bricked up at the moment. Okay. But one thing I know for sure is that it will be gone at the end of the year. Yeah. Oh dear. So last time when we were here, that was only a small gap. A small gap. Mm -hmm. The rest was dry land. Yeah. And now it's like a like a lake. Yeah. <laughs> so Are there still quarry in this? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. do uh, for sand and these uh, we call that kiesel for the uh, stones that you put into the concrete gravel and yeah. yeah. mm. So the government they, they sell the ground. Yeah. So they can dig out their stuff and after that they have to fill that back yeah ah, I see and, uh, so that'll end up as landfill yeah that's it yeah you can see that all along the river Rhine there are always some <coughs> quarry things where they yeah dig out the gravel and the sand and <coughs> Back in the medieval times, the river Rhine was looks totally different. It looks like a snake; it was going that way mm -hmm. and not straight. That was all done in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Yes, yeah. they straightened up the river Rhine and, mm -hmm. and uh, reinforced the river banks with ah. stones and and those big bankings. Yeah, that's it. Mm. And that's another reason why they have these uh, these problems with flooding. Yeah. Because there's no way to for the water to yeah. escape. Yeah. yeah. You can see we are on a higher level than the river. Road. We are. So uh, that's not a good area to. <laughs> you know what I mean? To build. Yeah. yeah. The high water, the water goes right up to here. Wow. <coughs> the river Rhine is then ten times the width of that of today. So yes. You see that line, the tree line there? Yeah. That's where the water is normally mm -hmm. when it's high water. Really? And that goes up to here. Wow. That's why there's nothing. Nothing built in there. Yeah. Because it'll get flooded. Yeah. So the river Humber is quite big stream. It is. Yeah. But it's not really a river. No, it's an estuary. That's yeah. it. So, but that is a river, and that's one of the biggest rivers in Europe. Mm. And um, 
back in the 1930s it was much wider than today yeah and uh, imagine the size of the of the Humber yeah. bridge yeah. so the distance from one to the other side that's mm -hmm. exactly or nearly that from here to there <coughs> that's about 1.5 kilometers yes mm -hmm. and that's how the river Rhine looked back in the 1930s oh wow yeah yeah really big and full of barges and steamboats and yeah <coughs> This is the Poison Krupp Steelworks. Just looking there, that is a natural draft cooling tower in action. I'll show you that while I'm here. See the uh, drift coming down there? <laughs> One large natural draft cooling tower at the steelworks here at Poison Krupp. There's one there under maintenance. So they're probably changing, probably replacing the drift, the drift eliminators in there. And the fill elements, because the fill doesn't last long, it has to be replaced a lot. And the fill is what transfers the heat energy from the air to the drift. And the drift becomes droplets, then falls as water. And that is a natural draft cooling tower in action here at Throysen Krupp, Deusberg, Germany. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, viewers. Thank you so much for watching that. I do appreciate it. I know it's not the best video I've ever done, but things are a bit manic at home at the minute. And uh, this is archive footage from 2021, so I wanted to share it with you. If you've got it in your hearts and you haven't done it already, please subscribe to the channel on that circle there on screen now. And I will see you every Thursday at 4pm UK time. Bye bye for now.